So now we come to the last presentation uh, from Mr. Simon Lavernier from RHGT Energy in France. And the presentation is entitled Effect of Process Parameters and Bio Biomass Combustion on Flat Pie Pellet Production from Underexploited Forest and Agricultural Feedstock. Please, Simon, the floor is yours. Hello. I will try to share my screen. So I think this is working. Hello everyone. So my name is Simon Laverne and I'm working in a PhD thesis on the effect of process setting and biomass composition on pellet production. And uh, I will first uh, speak briefly about the context and the state of art that I done during this uh, three, three year work. So as most of you know, uh, pelletizing is a very convenient process in order to produce uh, pellets with high density and uh, which is very convenient for the logistic and, and storage. And due to this, there is an increasing uh, since the last year, especially in Europe and Asia. And uh, because there is this uh, increasing in demand, uh, industrial, I try to find new feedstock in order to produce pellets uh, as non woody pellets. So what do we know about pelletizing uh, inside the biomass? Uh, lignin, cellulose, and hemicellulosis are important in order to uh, guarantee the binding of the material. And um, it was uh, shown on, uh, on the literature that lignin was very import important, especially for uh, woody biomasses. And this was done on laboratory scale mainly. But in industrial cases, pelletizing new feedstock is still challenging as uh, we don't know well the link between the biomass composition with this new material on the pellet, uh, on, in order to obtain high pellet quality. So the objective of this work was to first identify the effects of the process setting uh, regarding the moisture content, press channel length, energy input, and die temperature, which are important parameters during the pelletizing process in an industrial case using 22 different biomasses and using a flat type pelletizer in order to have an industrial relevant scale. The second objective was to pinpoint the most suitable process setting for in order to obtain a stable production high quality pellet with a biofuel uh, perspective. So the um, calorific value and the ash content was uh, also analyzed. And then, to, uh, finally, to discuss the influence of the biomass composition on this biomass, of this biomass assortment, sorry, on the process setting, and also the performance parameter, and of course, the pellet quality. The material method, so during this uh, project, 22 different biomasses were collected and uh, selected um, according to French and Swedish industrial partner. That's why we have uh, Scott Pine Bark, we focus on, so we regroup these 22 biomasses in four groups, barks, woods, straws, and as well agro byproducts as these products are, um, we, we have lots of products like this in France. So that's why we focus on the corn cobs, for example, and also the straws. So we politize all this material using, using the same methods. Uh, we first analyze every feedstock that uh, we politize regarding extractive content, ash content, as well as the elemental composition. And uh, what was very important for us, the parietal car carbohydrates, so lignin, cellulose, and hemicellulosis. During the politizing, we use the flat dye politizer this uh, during this pelletizing we we can't use the same uh, pelletizing moisture content and press challenge lens for the old material so what was uh, plan was to adjust the pelletizing moisture content and the press channel lens these two very important parameter uh, that we set on the flat die pelletizer in order in order to obtain the highest durability mechanical durability for the pellets we measure the performance parameter, energy consumption, the pro fine production, 
uh, Dutch temperature and as well as the production rate. And we control the product quality, mechanical durability, but density as well as the dimension and the motion. Something that we have uh, that I will speak uh, during this uh, presentation will be durability. It's a very important parameter during politizing, as the as uh, most of you know, because mechanical durability is the amount of material that are strong enough. So the goal is to have uh, the maximum of pellets. Uh, durable, so which are strong enough. So it's expressed in percentage. And the second uh, parameter, which is important, it's of course the bulk density. Now let's speak about the results. Uh, so when we var we change the pelletizing moisture contents, uh, one first result that was important was to uh, show that the effect of the pelletizing moisture content is not similar regarding the biomass that we pelletized. Here, I uh, selected three different uh, feedstock with three different behaviors. For example, when we politize Scott pine bark in green from 12 to 15 percent of moisture, we see that the pellet durability did not change using a, a flat die of uh, 48 millimeters. When we pelletize for its residue from 11 to 14 percent of moisture content, we see that the pellet durability decreased. And uh, when we pelletize reed canary grass from 13 to 16 percent of pelletizing moisture content, this durability increased. So we see that depending on the feedstock that we pelletize, the process parameter will affect the binding mechanism differently. When we focus on the belt density, Regarding all biomasses, the bulk density decreased when we increase the pelletizing moisture contents. But again, we see that depending on the feedstock, the, this decreasing of bulk density changed. For example, uh, if we see the pink curve, it's uh, cold cups pelletizing. We see that the, the decreasing of uh, bulk density was low. Since we compare, for example, with uh, forest residue in blue uh, on the on the left side, we see that this decreasing of bell density is higher. So again, the effects of the, of the feedstock is very important. Regarding press channel lens, so the press channel lens is the, something that it's also called compression ratio, uh, if we divide this by the, diamet the diameter of the, of, the di of the channel lens, sorry. So the spread channel lens always increase the durability until a specific point. So we see that, for example, we can't pelletize sunflower shell with a um, press channel lens of 30 millimeter or uh, above 60 millimeter. And uh, another material, it's also need to be adap adapted. So we see that this increasing is again different and this press channel lens have to be um, clearly choose in order to politize a large variety of feedstock. For the bulk density, well, it, it was the same. It always increased the bulk density, but its value and severity of the, of the, press of the maximum press channel lens was different. We found that the energy input during the politizing has a positive effect on the pellet durability and the bulk density in almost all cases. And contrary to what can be found in the, in the literature, no influence of the dye temperature was observed regarding uh, this, uh, these feedstocks and using this flat dye pelletizer. The influence of dye temperature is something that is well uh, studied on single pellet press but with our tool in an um, industrial relevant scale, it was not, uh, it did not show influence on the pellet quality. So now, uh, what about the biomass composition? So in order to compare the biomass composition, uh, the effect of biomass composition, what we did was to compare um, the, um, the settings where the durability was maximum because it has not no sense to compare um, settings uh, similar if we produce a pellet durability of 50 or something that doesn't even look like pellets. So we choose only the batches producing pellets with, uh, who respect the, the standards, so above 96% uh, of uh, durability. And we saw that the leaning effect was not as important as expected. 
In fact, the lignin seems to uh, when we increase the when the ink the lignin sorry was high, we saw that the optimum pressure length was lower only with wood. But lignin effect was not as uh, important as we thought when we used this old sample of biomasses. We also find that the cellulose seems to be negatively correlated with the average dye temperature only for barks and straws. The xylan, manan, and galactan, which are a component of hemicellulosis, seems to be correlated with the optimum pelletizing moisture content. So it's the moisture content that we use in order, in order to obtain the highest uh, pellet durability. So we saw that when the xylan was higher, higher level of moisture was necessary in order to obtain good pellets. And finally, something that uh, I think is interesting for, for, uh, for the um, politizing uh, uh, concern is the effect of acetyl groups on the energy inputs. It seems that the acetyl group contents was positively correlated with the energy needed in order to obtain high durability, uh, high, uh, durability points. So now the conclusion, we saw that the process parameter resulting in the production of high quality pellets were strongly dependent on the feedstock use. So that's why it's still uh, very like industrial have to uh, correctly set their pelletizing meal in order to produce high durability pellets. But something that is important, it's, it's possible from the 22 diversity of biomass that we studied to produce hydrability pellets with high bond density and, and convenient in order to respect the standard. The second was to show that with our, our study, the lignin effect was not as important as it, show, it is shown in the, in the literature. Then the moisture effects on the pelletizing may be linked with hemicellulosis compound. So we still study this uh, effect. For example, the um, effect of the hemicellulosis compound on the moisture absorption could have an impact on the pelletizing. And finally, the energy consumption during pelletizing could be linked with this acetyl group. So perspective for future work will be to compare the difference of lignin structures and property from wood and other feedstocks, because we suppose that the, the lignin is not similar regarding woods or other feedstocks. So it can be an expl explanation why it di didn't affect uh, the pelletizing uh, like the other feedstock. Then to investigate the effect of xylan, manan, and galactan on the most absorption of the biomass under pressure and heated condition in, on, in order to, to, um, to have something closest as possible of uh, real uh, politizing. And finally, to identify if acetic acid formation is occurring during politizing. Because we, I saw in the literature review that we a study find that when uh, adding acetic acid during the pelletizing of steam exploded uh, material, uh, the energy input necessary to produce pellets was higher. So this is something that can be, can be, can be studied. Thank you very much for your attention and I'd be pleased to respond to the question if you have. Yeah. Thank you a lot, Simon, Simon for, for this really interesting uh, presentation. I, I have a, a few questions for you. Uh, the first one is from Thomas Singh that asks, Simon, did you make a principal component analysis of your multi data sets to investigate further correlations? And I may uh, add to this, have you, I mean, if you look at the durability of the your pellets, have you uh, any idea about uh, what 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 is the key uh, parameters uh, with respect to that? So we, I personally didn't uh, study a PCI analysis, but this uh, work was performed uh, during a European uh, research program called Mobile Flip, where a partner uh, 
called SLU, uh, which is a, a Swedish university, uh, use the same similar data and they uh, do pelletizing with a ring dye uh, pelletizer. So we also compare our results with uh, their result using a ring dye pelletizer. And they used uh, PCA analysis and they uh, basically find the same um, the same tendencies is that lignin is did not uh, show up during the PCA analysis as a major um, effects during the bulletizing. Then of course the moisture and the, PC and the, and the press channel lens uh, are major impact. And xylan, manan and galactan uh, as well. So this is something that was uh, done on PCA and, and that um, confirmed uh, what I, I showed you. Okay, so it's still a little unclear what what exactly determines the, the, the strengths of, of the pellets as uh, you observe Exactly, it yeah, exactly. In fact, it's because we use a, a large range of, of biomass. And in fact, what uh, we plan to do is to focus on the starch, uh, for example, sorry, on the straw, on the box, in order to try to find the elements with, uh, which are the most important regarding similar family of, of uh, feedstock because for woods it's clear that it's signin but for example for box or straw it's something else that we still need to, to work on it. Okay. A last uh, question um, is uh, what can the reason uh, be for why acetyl uh, uh, groups affects the energy consumption during a pelletization? Do you know that? I don't know yet. <laughs> this is something very <laughs> unclear for me. Uh, okay. I want to use uh, other kind of material, maybe try to add uh, manually acetic acid in order to see if it showed up just because of data analysis of if it is something very uh, like which is created. So I have no answer so far, sorry. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, and I will thank all three speakers and say that the, in, in this session we was providing an overview of the use of solid biomass on a European scale. We uh, got some insights into a new simpler method for determine potassium content in uh, biomass samples, and we had this last study where it was investigated how the biomass properties influence the pellet uh, production uh, of different uh, biomasses. Uh, so I will thank everybody for their contribution and then hand over the word for if my uh, co-chair Thomas have anything to add here. Thank you for the summary. I only would like that. Please join me all. Uh, who listen to this session to a virtual applause to our three distinguished speakers. And thank you also from my side and goodbye. And thank you everybody. Thank you very much.